Good morning. Everything was perfect about last night, except for a group of party people. They were miles down the, the, the valley there, and you can just tell they're blasting music super loud. But it's quiet enough where I'm at, where it wasn't really a trouble to get to sleep. But every once in a while you'd wake up in the middle of the night and uh, you just hear this boom, 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 boom. I'm like, those guys are still partying? And the sun's about to come up and they are still out there partying, blasting music. That's just ridiculous. People think they're out in the middle of nowhere, bothering nobody. But there's hikers and everybody else is around. But anyway, we're on trail. We're doing good. We'll shoot for around 20 miles and see where that puts us again. In about three and a half miles, I think we hit the valley where we start to climb up to the top of the Mogollon Rim. So that'll be cool. Good climb of the day. And then we'll see what the top of there looks like. Still lots of water this morning. I'm not sure what the water situation is going to be like on top of the rim though. I haven't taken too close a look. I've also been seeing lots of fresh elk track out here. Still haven't seen one yet for this trail. Oh, I just spooked a herd of elk. I saw one definitely and I heard a second one. And they were just crashing through the woods. I don't think we're going to get one on camera though. Oh, there's one on the top of the ridge in front. Females. I'll keep my eyes out, but they're just a little bit ahead of me. Made it to the Washington Park Trailhead. And coming up next is crossing over the East Verde River. This must be like the source of the river. I crossed that earlier a couple of days ago. And this is the valley we're going up to get to the top of the rim. So it looked like about two miles and like 1,200 feet of elevation gain. The steepest part is going to be at the uh, end of the little canyon here. And that'll get us up on top. I think we have access to the water all the way up the canyon here, so that's not bad. are starting to pick up as we get closer to the top. I'm at a junction where there's a railroad tunnel up there somewhere. That's kind of cool. Can't really see much from here though. But our trail goes up this way still. We're getting close. It's a little bit more to the top. to the top. Ooh, that was a fun little climb. This area is called the General Springs. And there's an old cabin here, an old historical marker. Just down from the cabin is the General Springs trailhead. Just signed a little register there. I'm only seeing like three through hikers a day are signing the log books. And maybe there's only that many people around on trail. I see more than that off and on when I'm in towns. But definitely feel like I guess this is the tail end of the nobos. Well, I was double checking the water situation. We're in this canyon for about three miles. 
There's a little flowing stream off the left, so there's easy access here. But as soon as we leave the canyon, then it looks like water is going to be uh, half decent cattle troughs or really nasty cow ponds intermittently. I don't think there's a super long water carry in there, but there might be. I'm just going to have to take it one water source at a time and double check to the next one. Little patches of snow over there. Haven't seen snow on trail in a while. There's still snow on the Grand Canyon. Which is why the North Rim hasn't opened yet. Not for another two weeks, I think. Maybe by the time I get there, the snow's gotta melt down so they can like plow the roads and stuff. Well, it's coming up on nine o'clock and I'm getting hungry, so I think it's time for second breakfast. Found a nice little tent site area on the, on the side of the trail in this little canyon. This is a cool little place, very scenic. Got water running through it and uh, cool campsites here and there. So we'll uh, restock up on water and stuff and food and then um, we're, we're at least halfway through the canyon. It might be a mile or less before we hit the end of it and then um, we'll double check and load up on water before we exit the canyon just to make sure we're good there. We're back on trail. I went ahead and just topped up my water here. So we're about a mile until we finish this little canyon walk and we lose our water source. And then in six and a half miles we enter another little canyon in and out real quick but there's good flowing water down there so that'll be the next one and then five miles past that is a campgrounds with water spigots running and then we'll probably load up there it's probably gonna be the last water and we'll be looking to camp a few miles past that i think and i can see the junction where we turn away from this nice, nice little stream valley So beautiful out here. It's like such a stark difference from the southern half of the trail. Going through desert. Now we're up on the high mesas. Beautiful pine forests. These kind of rocks out here remind me of sea coral. It's all colorful and stuff. We've started the descent into Miller Canyon. East Clear Creek is down there. I don't think it's too long or too steep. Similar with coming out the backside, we'll have to climb up that ridge again. But we'll load up on water and take a little break down here. It's a little early for lunch, so I don't know if I'm gonna stop for lunch down here or just pack out and get back up on top of the rim. Have lunch up there somewhere else in the future. We'll see. Made it to the bottom of Miller Canyon. There's East Clear Creek. beautiful little area. It looks like I can just about cross this without getting my feet wet. I'll probably just hop across real quick, maybe go up just a little bit further and find a place to squat for lunch up there somewhere. Well this will do for a nice lunch break area. I'm just up uh, 20 feet from the water and we've already done 14 miles for the day. It's about 11:30, so we'll take a good long break here. I'm only looking at doing maybe eight more miles total or so. That'll put us at 22 and I think that'll be plenty for the day. So next goal from here will be like five miles up is this campgrounds. We'll take another good break there, refill on water, and then just kind of figure out from there where we're gonna end up for the night. Done with lunch, getting back on trail. It's really cold when you're just sitting there. It's cloudy and there's a really cold wind blowing. High is probably 50 degrees. Wind chills like probably in the 30s maybe. But we got like three quarters of a mile uphill and we'll be back on the top. Forest fire came through here at some point. Lots of deadfall. That's a good sign on a windy day. It's really gusty up in the trees, but there's enough of a break where it's not bad where I'm walking. Just gotta make sure a tree doesn't fall on me. I don't think there's supposed to be any storms coming. It's just kind of thin overcast. 
and gusty winds. The trail's gotten really rocky again. These cool looking forests. It's all flat. It's thinned out just enough where you can kind of see for, I don't know, 500, 1,000 feet into the woods. I've said it before, but not on this trail, but every forest is different from every other forest I've walked through. And I love that. I'm up on this overlook rim. That's all north of us. And I was checking my phone. I got a little cell service up here. I was getting some weather updates. High winds are supposed to last until about midnight before they die off. And it's going to be a cold one tonight. Temperature is dipping down around freezing. So that'll be fun. But we're about a mile to the Blue Ridge campground. We're starting to descent soon down into there. Made it down to the Blue Ridge campground. The descent down here was not bad. I see a dumpster. I see where the privy is. And there should be a water faucet here somewhere where I can top up on. This is a pay site. If you wanted to stay here, I think you'd probably have to sling him 20 bucks. But we'll load up here with stuff what we need and then uh, just keep pressing a couple more miles. Well, I'm good to go here. Looks like 20 bucks a night if you wanted to stay. Blue Ridge Campground. I loaded up with water in case we're dry camping tonight, which we probably are, but there's a water source about five miles ahead, maybe less than that. So we'll see. It's still like early. I think I'm gonna be getting to camp by like four. And if we get there super early, we'll just have a nice night chilling in a tent. Just came up to the Blue Ridge Trailhead. There's a little storage box there. That's got about eight gallons of water in it. And I don't need anything water-wise. I'm still good to go. But the highway just right there is Highway 87 again. So if you take a left here, it'll take you all the way back down to Pine. Looks like another register I can sign. So we'll cross the highway and uh, keep going. So I think I'm only looking at going another two miles or less. Just a flat spot that's not so rocky is all I'm looking for. Sometimes it's rockier and sometimes it looks really nice. Hopefully I can find something really good I can just tuck in these trees. Well, I think around here is going to be home for the night. Spaced away from any trees, no dead branches or dead trees will fall on me. It's still pretty breezy. There's definitely some ugly looking clouds off to the west. Nothing looks like a storm cloud. It's not supposed to rain, but there's just some unfriendly stuff in the vicinity. So I'll be hunkered down the best I can though. The upper level of trees is breaking a lot of the wind for me, so that's good. Well, I'm all settled in, and I think I'm secure as I can be. I don't think the weather's going to be that bad tonight. Just some high winds, I think that's about it. Uh, it'll be nice um, and cold, though. I'm prepared for uh, down to freezing, perhaps colder if necessary, so we're good to go there, too. We did, did a good day today. I think we did 23 miles. That's plenty. And uh, I guess that's about it. We'll see where we get for tomorrow. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the morning. Morning. First thing of note is I just saw an elk. It was like 500 feet away, kind of off in front of me. Um, I'll see if we can catch some more later, but that was kind of cool. Um, survived the night. Definitely windy. Winds died off around 2 in the morning. And it's definitely cold. So we'll blow freezing. Coldest night on trail so far. I think the other thing of note is that um, because I can't get the fly on my tent all the way zippered closed, um, the... Uh, at some point, there was a wolf spider that came in and built himself a little home in the corner of my tent. So I saw him as I was packing up and had to scoop him and toss him out. But I gotta get warmed up and I'll check back in a little bit. The elk I saw was just down there. Just saw him fleeting for a second. We're making our way into Jack's Canyon. It's not very deep, so there's no steep in and out. We just kind of pop down in here for about a mile and pop back out the other side. Sometimes there's flowing water, but the latest reports said there's pools down here to collect from if you need it. I've still got a little over a liter, so I don't think I need any water just yet. There should be some cow ponds and things coming up later, so I'll triple check the distances to my next water source, but I don't think I'm going to collect anything down here.
There might be occasional pools of water down here, but I haven't seen any yet. The bones of somebody down here. A big jaw. I don't see a skull. Either a cow or an elk. Well, I think that was it for Jack's Canyon. We're making our way out the other side. I saw one little mud puddle. That was it as far as water down there, but we're still good. I think the next decent water source is about five miles, so we can make that with what I got easy. Found a 500 mile marker, a little crooked, but good enough. Just saw another elk. They run away so fast. It was a couple hundred feet away. Just the one though. There's an elk right there. They haven't seen me yet. Another one to the left, right there. It's pretty rare when I see them before they see me. Well, they're running away now. There was three in that group. That's cool. I saw some elk yesterday and elk today. This is where they all are, up on the rim. Passing by the wall drip tank. It's there behind. Nothing more than a mud puddle. Seems like all the cow ponds out here are named tank gives a false impression of what you're looking for but we are um still on track for the one we're aiming for should be another cattle pond tank coming up in a couple more miles there's the homestead tank a bigger nicer looking pond i'm going to skip this one and keep going two and a half more miles is the foot in tree tank and i think that's where i plan on stopping and freshen up with water that one's supposed to be half decent at least we well, made it down to the foot in tree tank. The water's a little murky, but clear enough. Saw about a dozen woodpeckers across the way hanging out in the trees just right there. But I've already had my um, second breakfast, snack break. There was another guy here when I rolled up. Um, an older guy I hadn't met yet before by the name of Conductor. Another retired military guy, so I had a nice uh, second breakfast with him. He pushed on down the trail. I'll be following him shortly. All done here, topped up on water. Next stop is gonna be about seven miles up is the wild horse tank. So we're good to go till there. I've just been flying down trail the last two days. I feel like I haven't seen trail this flat since like out on the CDT going through the Wyoming basin. It's just hard, like I could do 30 miles, no problem it feels like, but <laughs> I'm trying to go slow, it's just, you get in a groove and you find you're moving three and a half, four miles an hour. You're like, whoa, I'm moving too fast. So I'll try to stop and take more breaks maybe, but when your body feels good and the train is good, you just keep moving. Tree's kind of hollowed out from the fire. It's got a little bit of a lean to it. Definitely looks at risk of toppling over at some point. There's been quite a number of these little backcountry dirt roads. This one's pretty unimproved. There's others that have been definitely more drivable. patches like this that I've hit where it's just one small acre where all the trees are just dead and fallen over. Looks like some forest fire damage, but just very localized in one acre. I've seen a couple of little patches like this that we've gone through. Well, I just ran across a group of three guys that were taking a little break, and one of them was Moneymaker. I'd never met these guys yet before on trail, but it seems like on every trail, there's always that one guy who's a few days ahead of you that's leaving all these awesome comments and far out uh, 
as far as where to camp, reliability of water sources, good updates on stuff in general. Anyway, for this trail, it's been Moneymaker. I've been seeing his comments since the beginning, and I caught up with that guy. So I was like, hey man, thanks for all the good comments. Keep them up. Another area with a group of dead trees. And I've been noticing a lot of them are just snapped in half instead of falling over at the base or something. I wonder if they get weakened by the forest fire and then like a big windstorm or something happens and they all just get snapped right in half. Well, I see a pond out there. This must be the wild horse tank. I'm moving way too fast today. I need to take longer breaks. It's like a little after 11, I think. 11.15 maybe. We're already 15 miles in for the day. So we gotta park it here and this will be our lunch break spot. Well, this water is looking kind of muddy. I got about 75% of a liter. I think what I might do is move, um, I'm still gonna stop here for lunch, but comments say that uh, the next water source is three and a half miles up and it's got a little inlet stream with clear water coming into it. So I think I'm gonna wait on water until I hit that next water source, but we'll definitely take a break here. This big crane just flew in. Check out the water source. Landed at the top of the dead tree in the middle of the pond. Done with lunch break. Back on trail. It's kind of chilly when you're just sitting there. Not moving. There's the slightest bit of a cool breeze. It's just kind of a cool day. Highs maybe in the high 50s. I don't even know if it's 60 degrees. Even sitting in the sun. It's still a little chilly. But anyway. All the other guys I've seen, I've been hiking around this morning, all showed up, so we had a nice little group lunch together. So we had Conductor, Moneymaker, Cake, and Skipper. And we're all on schedule to get into um, Mormon Lake for tomorrow. So I'll probably see those guys there. i probably make it there by noon. And uh, I don't think I mentioned yet, but I do have reservations locked in already too for uh, Staying at a lodge there. I think the facilities are pretty basic. We'll kind of see when we get there. There may only be a general store that's open. But we'll find out. I've seen quite a bit of bones out today. Looks like this one's supposed to be for the Arizona Trail. I haven't been filming them all, but there is quite the uh, collection of dead animals out here today. Every two miles or so you run into another set of bones. open field. I feel like I see some animals at the edge of the forest there, some half mile away. We did just cross over a fenced gate area, so it might be cattle, as opposed to a herd of elk or something cooler. It's too far away to tell from here, though. There's the Bargaman Park tank. It's supposed to be the freshest of these little cattle ponds in the area. From here, I'm only like four and a half more miles or so to my intended destination. And this little inlet stream should be nice. So we'll top up here and then press on the last couple miles. There's a group of uh, mule deer up there, at least half a dozen or so. Well, I think we made it to where I'm going to call home for tonight. The chef's tank. Nice little pond water. Plenty of stuff down there, should be clear enough. Just got to find a nice little flat spot that isn't so rocky. Maybe just right here by the pond. I'm expecting those other guys I've been hiking around are probably going to end up here. They're hiking a little bit slower, so they may show up in another hour or two. And by then they may be ready for camp. 
So I'll get settled in here, and we're good to go. Well, I got my tent set up. I'm getting all settled in. I got all my cold weather gear on because it is cold sitting in the shade. It's probably a high of 55 degrees today. Plus the light breeze that's blowing is just a cold wind. Probably gonna get down to freezing again tonight. But anyway, I was checking the cell service and I got a little bit of signal here and I had a message that came in from the Mormon Lake Lodge and they said that my reservation had been canceled because they're doing some renovations and they're like two weeks behind schedule on the renovations. They thought they'd be open already, but the entire building is closed. So everybody who had already booked rooms, they canceled the whole lot and they refunded everybody's money. So that sucks. So I can't get in there and get a shower and a bed and everything. But um, yeah, the Mormon Lake Lodge situation is just um, turning worse and worse because uh, there's a restaurant and stuff there too, but that's closed because they're understaffed and I think there's a general store there. So one way or the other, I have to get food because I need at least two days worth of food to bounce in and out of there to get to Flagstaff is the next stop. So we'll figure it out when we get there. It's only about 12, 13 miles away, something like that. We'll bounce in there, raid their general store, and then bounce back on trail for a night back in the woods, I think. So whatever, we'll figure it out. <laughs> I'm all settled in, best I can, ready for a cold night. I'll let you know if any of the other guys show up. I'm expecting somebody to, I don't think I'll be alone for tonight. But uh, that's it, I'm gonna get this video all closed out and edited and finished and we'll cook up dinner right after. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.